a comprehensive timeline of literally everything Meghan Markle's half-sister has ever said about her. It's hard to keep track of where Samantha Markle stands with her half-sister, the Duchess of Sussex, on any given day. Ever since Meghan Markle's engagement to Prince Harry was announced, the former suit star's older and clearly estranged sibling has been on one hell of a crusade to take her down and get herself some press in the process. But in that time, the elder Markle's feelings towards her sister have shifted with such regularity that it's enough to make your head spin. Last week, she was apologizing to Meghan and her husband for past misunderstandings in light of her sister's pregnancy announcement while also somewhat ironically saying that everybody just needs to shut the heck up and let this be a great thing for them. And this week, she's branded her a liar after asserting that a speech Meghan delivered at University of the South Pacific in Fiji that touched on her own higher education history had distorted the truth. So much for shutting the heck up. So, in the spirit of accountability, something that Samantha clearly likes to hold her sister to, we present a complete timeline of everything she's ever said in this very one-sided war of words. November 2016 Seemingly apropos of nothing, and a full year before a royal couple announced their engagement, Samantha began her crusade in earnest on Twitter, reportedly writing, the royal family would be appalled by what she's done to her own family. The truth would kill her relationship with Prince Harry. He wouldn't want to date her anymore because it puts her in a bad public light. In an interview with The Sun, Samantha, who is diagnosed with MS in 2008 and since been confined to a wheelchair, admitted that she'd had little contact with her sister over the last decade. Hollywood has changed her, she said. I think her ambition is to become a princess. Three weeks later, in an interview with Entertainment Tonight, Samantha changed her tune praising her for being studious and world-traveled. She's got the eloquence of a Condoleezza Rice, and the grace of Princess Diana, she added. January 2017 After Meghan embarked on a week-long trip to India in honor of World Vision Canada, an organization that works to support and sponsor children and families living in poverty around the world, Samantha slammed her humanitarian efforts, reportedly tweeting, when people are starving or dying of thirst, it is an insult to use one's voice. Exploitation. Go to the desert with a truck full of water when people are dying and offer them your voice. And when she was called out for the strange reaction, she replied, she is the one with the hardened heart. I've always been supportive of her but I won't enable the lies and hypocrisy. March 2017. After Meghan's pal Serena Williams praised her on Twitter for an article about period poverty she'd written in time for International Women's Day. Samantha tweeted, but what did she donate to them to make real chance come about? Money for toilets, maxi pads, or just a photo op? Around the same time, she also belittled Meghan's acting career, tweeting, you mean the job on 90,210? And alleged that Meghan ignored a sister in a wheelchair because it is an embarrassment to her. This was also when Samantha floated the idea about her tell-all book for the first time, tweeting, Excited about my book The Diary of Princess Pushy's Sister. April 2017, Samantha clarified the scope of her book in an exclusive interview with the Daily Star, saying my book deals with my biracial family in a candid, warm, personal and socially important way. Maybe when Meghan is more mature and reads the book she'll understand. Some of it she won't like, some of it she might. September 2017, Samantha's pitch to publishers for her book, written in April is revealed in page 6. In it, he says that her book illustrates the evolution of my biracial lens since my birth in the 60s, the bigoted underpinnings in my own family that echoed in my mind as a child while I defended, the idea, that there is no such thing as color, only fear and hatred that people like my own grandmother were taught in the uneducated and insecurity-based pockets of America and the world. When my biracial sister was born, I would be forever colorblind. The pitch continued. If only I could predict the media frenzy and racial slurs that would occur as a direct result of my beautiful baby sister possibly becoming the first biracial princess or duchess in royal history. Little did I know that I would stand looking back over my shoulder at how far we've come in the world towards true multiracial and multicultural appreciation, contrasted with how far we have to go in our evolution towards drive. Martin Luther King's Dream November 2017 Following Meghan and Harry's engagement announcement on November 27, Samantha spoke with Us Weekly about what was really important 
how the good news made her feel. It was really exciting for me, I am so happy for her, she said. It was kind of funny, it was like my boyfriend showed it to me and I was on the phone with my father and I got to let him know too. We didn't know it was going to come out this soon, so it was nice to wake up to. In the same interview. She attempted to downplay her estrangement with Meghan while also shifting blame for her nastier tirades on the media. It's been such a whirlwind with us and I'm sad she believed some of the other interviews I did where words I never said were taken out of context, so it's been a bit since we've spoken, she told the publication. December 2017 After Prince Harry referred to the royals as the family that I suppose, Meghan's, never had during a BBC radio interview. Samantha snapped back, where else? On Twitter. Actually she has a large family who were always there with her and for her. Our household was very normal and when dad and Doria divorced, we all made it so it was like she had two houses. No one was estranged, she was just too busy. Read my book complete with facts and photos, she wrote. Meg's family are family, is complete with sister, brother, aunts, uncles, cousins, and the glue of our family our amazing completely self-sacrificing father. She always had this family. Marion merely extends it. January 2018, in an interview with In Touch, despite referring to Meghan as extremely well-behaved and respectful and diplomatic as a child, Samantha slammed her half-sister's beloved mother Doria Ragland for just shutting everyone out after her daughter began dating Harry in 2016. In my mind Doria wanted to run around and seal off all the hatches. She became very possessive and controlling, she said, in essence blaming the estrangement on her. She also took issue with the Ralph and Russo dress Meghan wore in the engagement photo shoot, claiming, if you can spend $75,000 on a dress, you can spend $75,000 on your dad. April 2018 Samantha took to Twitter to assert that the entire Markle family had not yet been invited to the wedding, something she, naturally, took great umbrage with. The Markle family is looking forward to our wedding invites. No one has won yet, she wrote in one tweet. Still waiting. I hope London is wheelchair friendly. Excited. She followed that up with, at issue is not a matter of closeness as more than 1,000 complete strangers are invited. Family is family. I have an uncle I have only seen once by I would never say he is not family because we are not close. Humanitarians move forward with love and kindness especially to family. And followed that with, smoke and mirrors cannot hide the elephant in the room. Out of respect, tradition and humanitarianism. The hashtag Markles should be invited if 2,000 complete strangers are invited. Our uncle who got her the internship, brother, me, best friend of 30 years Nikki Pretty, nephews. Fact. That same month, she urged Prince Harry Mann up on Twitter, adding, shout outs about humanitarianism, don't work when you are allowing Meg to ignore the Markles. It is s contradiction, someone must point out that the emperor, sick is not wearing any clothes. She also took aim at the spectacle surrounding the big event itself, tweeting, for the royal wedding, instead of shuffling homeless people to the outskirts of Windsor, there should be a tented area with steak dinners, music, job corps and housing representatives, set up to improve their lives. Homeless people are human. Treat them with dignity. Namaste. May 2018. In the ramp up to the wedding, Samantha takes the blame for arranging the supposedly candid paparazzi photos of her father Thomas Markle. The bad press over and my father doing staged photos is my fault. The media was unfairly making him look bad so I suggested he do positive photos for his benefit and the benefit of the royal family, she tweeted. We had no idea he would be taken advantage of. It was not for money. She then told the Daily Mail, it was not money motivated, adding, I have no idea, if he was paid. But if he was it would have been a pittance. They don't pay that much. Around this time, she also changed her story about the last time she'd spoken to Meghan, saying that it had only been since 2015 and not 2008, as previously claimed. During a heated exchange with Piers Morgan on Good Morning Britain, she defended the way she'd spoken about Meghan. I think anyone who understands the English language and looks at what I've said verbatim would realize that I've said lovely things about. Megan. But if there was a behavior or situation that I questioned, I think I was honest and fair about targeting the situation or the behavior and not her. Speaking with TMZ, 
she made clear she would be ignoring the palace's wishes to keep her mouth shut. There's something in this country known as free speech, she told the outlet. Megan doesn't have a copyright on that and she's not going to tell me that I can't speak my own life or my father's where it's a matter of public self-defense because the media is disparaging us. That same day, she appeared on Channel 4's Meet the Markles, admitting she didn't expect or demand an invitation to the wedding. Days after the wedding, Samantha spoke with the son to rip apart Meghan and Harry yet again, angry now that there was no public statement read about Thomas at the wedding he was forced to miss. I know the day is about Meghan and Harry but, had Charles been in hospital with a heart attack, I think there would have been statements released expressing their sadness that he wasn't there, she said. I watched the bishop talk about love and unity and forgiveness and I hoped it would strike a chord within Meghan. So if that was real and if I were to define a principle to all of this then it would be that we all just work for a peaceful resolution and reunion as a family. I feel a religious and moral obligation to be open to her and not be vindictive or isolating or hurt. She was also furious over reports that Thomas would not get a coat of arms, unlike other fathers of commoners who marry a royal. To exclude him off a coat of arms is really stripping him of an honor and it's a huge insult. After a heart attack that would be cruel and isolating she said before going in on the royal family. The royals had generations of scandal in their own family. You've got inbreeding, you've got substance abuse, you've got alcohol abuse, you've got infidelity. On what grounds could the royals feel that the Markles are somehow not worthy? That's the pot calling the kettle black.